What's up guys, this is Take It Out, and today I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade or replace the hard drive in your 2017 4K iMac. Okay, so before we get started, you're going to need a couple of things. First, you're going to need a toolkit, which I will link in the description. You're going to need a hard drive or SSD, depending on what you want to replace your hard drive with. And you're going to need a pry tool. It is also important to note that this video will be very similar, but not exactly the same as the process for a late 2012 all the way to a 2019 21.5 inch iMac. Okay, so before we go any further with this video, it would be a great idea to have your iMac backed up so you can easily transfer the information on your old hard drive to your new hard drive. If you want to skip this step, you can go to the time shown on your screen. So first what you want to do is have an external hard drive plugged in. I already have the backup made, but I'm going to show you how to make it again. So you just go to System Preferences, hit Time Machine, and you hit Select Disk, and it will ask you to select a disk to back up your iMac 2. As you can see, I have mine already labeled as Time Machine 2, but you just select whatever hard drive you want to use and it will automatically back up your iMac. You'll have to wait on it, but then when we put the SSD in the iMac, it will be very easy to restore all your information. All right, so let's go ahead and shut down our iMac and begin to disassemble it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is make sure that your iMac is leaned back just so there's no risk of the screen falling forward. And we are going to pry around all the edges of the screen. Okay, so after you're finished with your pry tool, we're going to need to lay our iMac down. Okay, so once your computer is laid down, you're going to need some suction cups. Now, these will often come with your toolkit. You'll also probably need some wedges because the screen is going to want to stick back down. So after you've gone around the edge, unfortunately, sometimes you kind of have to go back through it just to loosen up the rest of the glue and then place these wedges along the way. Okay, so now you're going to want to take your suction cups and place them on the display. So now we just want to lift up the suction cups. Okay. Okay, so now that the screen has popped up, if you raise it up, you're going to see two cables right here. So this one, there's a little tab that you can kind of see right here. And you just pull the tab up and the cable, you can kind of wiggle it gently. And it comes out. The cable closest to the top of the iMac may be a little bit more difficult to get out. You're supposed to squeeze the sides of it and then gently pull, but if that doesn't work, you can gently pry on the sides of it. Just go back and forth on each side until the cable comes out. Just be very, very gentle not to bend or break anything. Okay, so now that you have it all, all the way disconnected, we can lift up the display. It's gonna be a little bit difficult at first, you're going to feel some resistance, but don't worry, it's just adhesive at the bottom. Then you're going to see a piece of adhesive in the bottom left corner, and you can pull it up and start undoing the adhesive of the screen. If it tears like mine just did, you're just going to have to pry a little bit more out. There was actually another piece where you could grab the adhesive on the right side of the display that I just missed. So that might make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, so to actually take out the hard drive, we just need to take out these four T10 screws, making sure to keep them in order because they are all different lengths. Okay, so once you have the four screws off, you can literally just take these connectors off and you're gonna see the hard drive right here and it's going to be connected to a very tight SATA cable. Don't worry, it's okay, as long as you don't pull on it too hard. You should be able to pop the SATA cable out, especially if you use a little pry tool. And there you go, your hard drive has been removed. So as you can see, the hard drive in our iMac has these rubber corner pieces on here. So they're just gonna be really stuck to the hard drive, kind of like this. And all we need to do is take our brand new SSD, and stick it in like so. Make sure the corners are nice and tight. Same with the other side. All right, now your SSD is ready to go back in the iMac. 
Okay, so before we continue on, I would like to point out that you will notice the CPU fan and the power supply are missing from this clip. That is because I actually was doing other upgrades to the Mac at the time, and when I put the hard drive back in, I put it back in before I put in some other components, so bear with me. It will be easier though in this clip to get your hard drive back in if you take your hard drive tray out, which is still possible to do without taking out the other components. We can remove our hard drive tray with one T8 screw. That should just pop up. What I'm going to do is take our SSD or hard drive that we prepared earlier and plug it in first. And then put our drive bay down and then it's okay if your hard drive or SSD just sits off to the side for a minute. Then you're going to take your T8 screwdriver and screw the one screw in the drive bay right here. Now that your drive bay is secure, you can go ahead and put your hard drive or SSD down in the drive bay. This is way easier than installing the drive bay and then trying to connect your hard drive or SSD simply because of how tight the cable is. So now we can take our hard drive mount covers and go ahead and place them on the hard drive. Please note that the back side of the cover is actually supposed to go on top of the power supply, not under it as shown in this video. All you have to do now is screw them in. If your Mac is upside down, it's gonna be your right side is where these two screw holes are going to be the two screws that are even. They are 21 millimeters. They should look something like this. These are two T10 screws and you can begin to screw them down. Okay, and on the left side is where you're going to have the really long 27 millimeter screw. And on the bottom left is where you're going to have your really short eight millimeter screw. Okay, so unfortunately I had some technical difficulties with this video. However, I have still not applied the adhesive to my display, unfortunately, but it was quite a pain to be able to get this cable to go back into the motherboard so i will not be unplugging it instead i'm going to be applying my adhesive around the edge of the display while the cable is still plugged in i really apologize for this but it's just what has to be done because i'm honestly not sure after how difficult it was to get this cable back in if it will be possible to pull it out and put it back in we actually had to adjust some of the pins because one of them appeared to be slightly bent but i can go ahead and plug in this cable here Okay, so the adhesive did not come in in time, so I will be using double-sided tape. Whatever your adhesive solution is, just make sure to apply it to every edge of the display. Okay, so now it's time to lay the screen down on your adhesive or glue. Okay, so now it's time to stand the iMac up and plug in the time machine backup that we made earlier. Okay, so now that our screen is properly installed and our time machine backup is plugged in, we are going to boot our Mac holding Command R on the keyboard. You will see this internet recovery screen. It will take quite a minute and it may ask you for a Wi-Fi password but I'll be back as soon as this is loaded. Okay, so now that we have made it to macOS recovery, go ahead and select disk utility, then go ahead and click on the new SSD or hard drive that you installed, hit erase, title it whatever you want, just make sure it is formatted to macOS extended journaled, and then hit erase again. So now we can go to restore from time machine, go ahead and hit continue, and then select the latest backup that you have on your time machine drive hit continue, and then select Macintosh SSD or whatever you titled your new drive. Hit continue again, hit erase disk, and then you are good to go. We'll let it finish restoring and then see where we are afterwards. All right, and as you can see, Time Machine has finished restoring and my Mac is back to normal, back to running exactly how it should. So congratulations, you have now upgraded or replaced your hard drive. So thank you so much for watching this. I apologize about the technical difficulties I had with the screen connection and the adhesive on the display, but I hope that this video still helped you out. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Also, I will link the toolkit that I used along with the SSD that I bought in the description. So thank you so much for watching this. I'll catch you in the next one.